Wild About Books by Judy Sierra, pictures by Mark Brown. It started the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer and sat in her chair. At first, all of the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. By reading aloud from the good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose, a wombat, an oryx, a lemur, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of skinks. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Forsaking their niches, their nests, and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Choosing thin books and fat books and cat-in-the-hat books and new books and true books and heaps of how-to books. Giraffes wanted tall books and crickets craved small books, while geckos could only read stick-to-the-wall books. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter, who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Raccoons read alone and baboons read in bunches and llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. Hyenas shared jokes with the red-bellied snakes, and they howled and they hissed till their funny bones ached. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right there at the zoo, such as, why were the bandicoots books overdue? Gently, Molly taught lessons in treating books right, for the boa constrictor squeezed, crickters too tight, baby bunnies mucked up goodnight moon with their paws, giant termites devoured the Wizard of Oz. And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all of the pictures right off the pages. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the other animals decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. The walking stick wrote, A cannibal twig silently devours a leaf, eating, not eaten. Pretentious, said the scorpion. The dung beetle wrote, Roll a ball of dung, any kind of poo will do. Baby beetle bed. Stinks, said the scorpion. The millipede wrote, I dig for treasure in my enchanted castle, a rotten apple. Boring, said the scorpion. Giant hissing cockroach wrote, hiss, 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 hiss. Hiss, 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 hiss. Hiss, 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 hiss. Redundant, said the scorpion. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barbary ape. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulitzer Prize. The cheetah wrote, it was a dark and stormy night. The wind howled, the moon cast a mournful pale yellow glow.
With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork, and a new to build a branch library there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check out the books. We can put them on the shelves. And they did, and they do up to this very day. Three cheers for the zoo brary. Hip, hip, hooray! When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They are snug in their niches, their nests, and their nooks, going wild, simply wild, about wonderful books.